Hey, this is Hans on the Ramen Isle. It's time for the Ramen Raiders Top 10 Instant Noodle Add-Ons of All Time, 2015 edition. All right, to start things off, I absolutely hate the term hack ramen. Like hack, hacking your ramen, hacking your instant noodles, uh, pimping your ramen. It's just like, I don't know, it's a little too cliche, you know, I, I just don't get it. Um, I'm more into, you know, add-ons, garnishes. It's a little more professional, I think. Um, this is a list of things that... If you follow my blog, that you'll see me using on uh, instant noodles a lot. And it's kind of set up to help people know what to look for and where to get it. Uh, some of these things are kind of hard to find, but if you've got an Asian grocery, you should be able to find them in there. Um, but if not, it's going to be a little trickier, but there might be some work around. So anyways, let, let's just get started. Uh, the first one on the list is Chinese sausage. Now, Chinese sausage is, it's sausage, it's Chinese style, it's kind of got a sweetness to it. Uh, it kind of looks like, uh, what do you call it, cocktail pepperoni? It's kind of like wrinkly on the outside, that kind of thing, but oh man, it's good. And what you'd use that for, at least what I use it for, spicy Chinese instant noodles, um, anything spicy in Taiwanese works great. Um, usually like the, the artificial beef flavored stuff that it's spot on anything spicy artificial beef um, What I do is I just take I take the whole pack and I throw it in the freezer um, part, of, part of the thing of this list too is the fact of You know if you're on a budget and you don't have a ton of money to spend This will make you be able to stretch your garnishes out and make some really awesome instant noodles you know, anytime cheaply. Uh, and then I just pull off one of the links and then I use a knife and slice it really thin, um, small chunks. Actually, it's a lot easier to do when it's frozen and it's really greasy stuff. So what you do is you cook your noodles and throw some in and cook it a little bit more and the grease from that comes out into the broth and makes it a little bit fuller. Um, it's awesome. I love this stuff. And it's really not that expensive. I think you can get some really decent quality stuff for three or four bucks. Um, they have some more expensive varieties. I usually get the stuff in the red pack. Um, it'll either be on the shelf on an, <clears throat> excuse me, on an end cap or something in a uh, Asian grocery. It's, it's hard to miss. You'll, you'll, you'll find it. So uh, I'm thinking you can also get this online because I don't think it has to be chilled. I think, I think it's kind of shelf stable. So sometimes you'll see it chilled, sometimes you won't, so. Number two on the list, I use this all the time. They're called tofu puffs, uh, also known as taupak. Uh, it's basically like a nice little pillowy piece of tofu, almost bready on the inside. Lots of big air holes in it. And what you do, is you pull one out and you cut it in two with like, I use a pair of kitchen scissors and then you drop it in with the broth. I'm always using this in Malaysian curry, uh, Singaporean curry, laksa, uh, things like that. And it takes on the broth and it just has a nice texture to it. It's not, not extremely flavorful stuff, but it, it adds a texture. Um, it's tofu, so it's okay for vegetarians, but I'm not a vegetarian, but hey, you know, if you are, it's okay. Um, yeah, so if you can find tofu puff, uh, you're probably going to find it with all the other tofu. Um, I don't think you can get that one online. That's That definitely needs to be refrigerated. And usually they last about, mm, I think usually you get about 15 days if they're freshly stocked in the store. About 15 days in the fridge, maybe a little bit more. So something to be on the lookout for. Uh, third on my list, and also these are not in a best to worst, greatest to less, least greatest order. These are just in a random order. So uh, number three is R, mung bean sprouts. Um, I'm really picky about mung bean sprouts. I use them all the time. Somebody said you need to boil them. 
uh, because there are people getting, I think it was Legionnaire's disease from mung bean sprouts, but I haven't had that problem. I do boil them, though, because I don't want any chance of that, and I haven't heard about any cases of Legionnaire's disease in a long time, but I digress. You know, if, if, if you get some mung bean sprouts, wash them at least. Um, there's a brand that I absolutely love, and it's called Salad Cosmo, and they're out of California, and all the other bagged mung bean sprouts go bad so quick, but their stuff, it has at least three or four days left on it, and that's the thing. Mung bean sprouts are alive, you know, they're sprouted mung beans, so they will keep growing. And after a little while, they just kind of get nasty, you know. It, they're very, very, very short life fridge items. So I also, I've tried like boiling them and then freezing them. No, that's nasty. You, you can do it if you're in a bind, like say you live somewhere where you have to drive like 200 miles to get mung bean sprouts. Um I'm pretty sure I'm the only person that I know of that would, you know, go out of my way in that situation to keep and preserve mung bean sprouts. But, yeah, um, get them. Get them off and use them. They're good. Nice little crunchy addition to your instant noodles. Um, yeah, and like I said, yeah, usually a shelf life of like five days in the fridge. So... The next one we got is fish cake. Now, there's a zillion different kinds of fish cakes. Uh, there's kamaboko, which is, it, it, it's kind of like a little loaf. Uh, it's got pink on the outside and kind of whitish on the inside. And it comes on a little piece of wood. Um, I used to save these things. Me and my son, just, he, he loved to build them with them, you know, play like Jenga with these things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's steamed fish cake. And you just slice it. Kind of like cheese. Um, kind of that's the half moon shape one. There's Naruto Maki, which Naruto, the the anime character, he's got that little swirly on his forehead or on his little headband. That's from that, um, and it's kind of like a tube. You can slice it uniformly, or you can do it at an angle to make really long, wide slices of it. Um, other fish cakes include, I mean, there's like crab stick, which is, I don't know, it's kind of like a crab cake or a fish cake in a way. It's made of fish because usually it's imitation. And then there's, uh, what do you call it? Busan fish cake. And that's from South Korea. And that's usually like a fish cake with a fried outer coating. Good stuff. I guess the fishermen used to have leftovers from selling on the dock or some deal and they would grind it all up throw some water and some flour with it fry it up and that's how you got boost on fish cake so that's what i hear so anyways fish cake yeah just you know prep it throw it in the freezer in a ziploc or a few ziplocs because they'll kind of stick together you know, like the kamaboko, if you only want one piece or maybe two, um, they'll, they'll be apt to stick together. So you want to keep them separated. Um, and generally, I just, you know, throw it in with whatever I'm cooking, boil it, you're good to go. Uh, the next on the list is cilantro, which also is known as coriander. So if you're Wondering what I'm talking about when I'm adding coriander? It's cilantro. It's coriander. It's the same thing. It's kind of like hurricane and typhoon. So this one is just built for Thai food. It's built for anything seafood, anything spicy. It's awesome stuff. You can just rip some off um, the stalks and throw it in with whatever you're cooking. Um, this one... This one's good to look out for. I, I would say it gets a good five-day shelf life in the fridge, but unfortunately, de depending on the kind of fridge you got, if it gets too cold in the crisper, it'll wilt real quick. Also, some stores will just, I don't know, let them sit. If you, if you go to a place and there's like one bunch of coriander left, 
Good chance it was sitting under about 50 other ones. So it's already pretty much toast if you're getting to that point. Um, a lot of the way that stores rotate their stock is they'll put the newest stuff to the back. So keep, keep an eye on that. But I think in produce, it's the same kind of thing. So what they'll do is to put the new stuff way up in the back and then pull it forward and rotate it out daily. I don't know, but all I can say is, uh, yeah, good stuff and really cheap. I mean, you're looking at under a dollar for a bunch. Um, this one, no, no, don't, don't freeze it. It's like, maybe like freezing lettuce. So yeah. Another one is, this is a really important one, meat for Korean barbecue. Okay, so if you have a Korean grocery um, or a Chinese grocery that caters to Koreans as well, you're stoked because what you can do is you can go into the, the meat counter area, look at all the prepackaged stuff. Chances are you will find big packages of like pork, uh, chicken, eh, chicken sometimes, and uh, beef, especially beef, and they slice it like bacon. And so what you can do is you can go get some of this stuff, grab like three slices of it off, put it in a Ziploc bag, you know, spend like 10 bucks and you've got like 20 bags and, you know, get the air out of them, put them in a, like a freezer Ziploc, and there you go. You've got like little beef portions that are almost, the, that you know, it's pretty much the same kind of thing as you could use for hot pot. In hot pot, you take raw meat, drop it in, and it cooks in the pot. So you get all the nice grease and fat floating around and everything. So I would say that is the biggest way to save cash if you want to put meat in your instant noodles. Um, yeah, I think I've spent like 10 bucks and gotten a... A four pound uh, thing of like, God, like, I think it, was, it wasn't ribeye, but it was like round or s some kind of, some kind of meat. It wasn't super fatty, but it's super thin. And sometimes it's actually slightly frozen. So you can like peel it off, you know, for the, for the Ziplocs, like little, little sheets, like, like, a, like a slice of paper. So kind of cool um and again you can fry it you know in a pan you can drop it in while the noodles are boiling works great with beef ones it works really good in uh south korean like gumtang which is a uh, kind of a creamy beef beef bone oxtail bone simmer soup thing so yeah check check that out if you can find it you're going to be super stoked so there's some protein for you. Uh, the next one we got is one of my all-time favorites, and that's fish ball. I remember I went with my son to the Asian grocery we used to live next to. And I remember looking at the seafood counter, and then they had like this big row. And then they had all these things that looked like kind of like meatballs, but they weren't meatballs. They said they were fish balls. And I'm thinking like, wow, those are for some really big fish, huh? But... I digress. Uh, they're they're like a ball, and they're kind of like if you made a hot dog out of fish instead of beef. Does that make sense? It's like really well ground fish of different kinds with different flavors. You can get them in like you get cuttlefish or prawn or lobster ball, uh, fried fish ball. Uh, and then there's the, those, those, those are all the Singaporean kinds or Malaysian kinds. Those are the kinds I like the most. Uh, there's a brand called Dodo, and they make really good fish ball. Then there's the Taiwanese kind, and I'm not super keen on those. They kind of look like, um, you'll see in the little video going by, um, they almost look like a Hershey's Kiss. They kind of like this little nub at the end popping up. And usually those are hollow. In the center and sometimes they have different things in the center like crab row uh, flying fish egg there's all sorts of different things you can have in the center of those so personally i go for the uh singaporean malaysian and um and then there's the taiwanese ones which 
I really don't understand how those are supposed to be used or I've never, I've never seen their use in practice, should I say. So, um, somebody knows like what you have those with, or do you just have them by themselves? It's kind of a, almost like a dim sum kind of piece. Um, let me know. Fishball goes great in the freezer. Uh, I've got tons of them in my freezer right now and they will stay frozen indefinitely pretty much they'll just get freezer burnt and the more freezer burnt they get they just kind of get more rubbery so yeah just use them up tasty stuff also by the way they do make instead of fish ball they also make beef ball and beef ball is like something you'd find in pho or pho and uh yeah you can find those if you can find a big area with fish ball in your asian grocery You'll probably find the beef, the beef ball won't be too far behind. Also, probably the uh, fish cake won't be too far away from there either. Ah, uh, next we have eggs. So, I often get asked, especially when I do a uh, a South Korean review, how do you get your eggs to look like that? And what they're talking about are have these like wow it looks just like you have an egg yolk how do you cook that well it's simple i don't what i do is i take an egg put it on a big ladle and then put like a tupperware under it and you know crack the egg into it rock it back and forth until all the whites are gone and then there's that little tiny nub that sticks out i get just straight and then I snip it. And then I just drop that right on top of a fresh pot of instant noodles. Now, here's the thing. Um, yeah, it's raw. It's raw egg. Um, some people have said, oh, you shouldn't do that. Some people say, oh, why wouldn't you be able to do that? I do it. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, I guess it has to do with some places don't pasteurize their eggs. But I... <laughs> I would think if you pasteurized an egg, it would be hard boiled. I don't know. So, um, so there's that you can use just straight raw egg on top of like a South Korean variety. You'll see it on the packages all the time. It's like, wow, look at that. That's pretty snazzy. But yeah, that's, that's all they do is put a raw egg yolk on top. Also, you can hard boil eggs, which obviously you know how to do that. Um, you can drop it right into instant noodles, kind of making things more hearty. Uh, fried egg on top of mie goreng, classic. God, that's good. Um, yeah, yeah. You can you can also make. Oh, uh, there's a way to make super ultra thin garnish for South Korean instant noodles. I remember. Um, and basically, it's just like scrambled egg, just made super thin. And then you slice it into strips. So, eggs, eggs, eggs. Moving on. All right, so this is a really new one to me. Pepper strands. So, I've seen this in, like, fine restaurant ramen, like, food porn photos. That's just like, wow, look at that. That looks so awesome. What is it? It looks kind of like little sticks or just kind of like a bundle of hair or somebody scribbled and they just made it into like something you put on noodles. Um, it's pepper strands. Uh, my friend uh, Shinichi told me that they're also known as Ito Turasi. Um, but yeah, it's it's it looks neat and they're kind of... I don't know. They're not delicious. They're more of something to, that are neat to add on. It's like, wow, that looks gourmet. Ooh, you know, impress your friends. Put on some pepper strands. They're hot. And they're peppers. Um, these are, oh, oh, God, where were they with? Uh, I think it was like with dried mushrooms, pepper, powders, stuff like that at a big Korean grocery I usually go to. So, um it's a tricky one. Definitely a tricky one to find. It took us about 20 minutes of searching around the store and we found it finally. Um, so granted, we go to the Asian grocery almost every day. So 
But yeah, that's, that's, that's a neat one to try out. Finally on the list, we have one of my other all-time favorites, uh, Carved Squid. So I'd always seen these things. They looked like pine cones, and they were on, you know, again, South Korean. Um, other, there's squid, fish ball, fish cake, egg, all this stuff. It's used all over Southeast Asia with noodle dishes. So it's not just a South Korean thing, even though I keep bringing South Korea up. Um, carved squid is basically, if you had a, a, like a squid filet, and then you take a knife, and then you do some lines this way, and then some lines, you know, cross-hatched, snip it into little strips, drop it into boiling water, and what happens is the squid will curl up really quick. Kind of like when you, if you know about it, if you dunk octopus into boiling water, the tentacles will start curling up. It's like, eee! So, um, what's nice is you can go to the store and you can buy carved squid because my wife doesn't, what, she's not, just not too keen on the smell of like leftover extra parts of squid in the garbage can that kind of stink up the kitchen. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I would recommend that. It's kind of got a, it's kind of a soft taste or soft texture rather. Um, it's squid, so if you've had calamari, it's the same kind of thing. It's just not breaded. Um, I guess you could bread it. I wouldn't do it. It's already frozen. If you really want to bread calamari, you want to use fresh. Um, but yeah, it's it's really easy. You just drop it in boiling water and it comes back to life. Uh, I keep this stuff in the... Fr I get this maybe once every six months and it just sits in my freezer. And whenever I need some, I just grab a couple chunks, drop it in, boom, good to go. So anyways, those are my... 10 favorites. Uh, there's a lot more that I've used in the past. Um, oh, what do you call it? Oh, it's that uh, ginger. It's this Japanese ginger that's bright pink. You'll see that on yakisoba reviews that I do. Another thing that's good on yakisoba is uh, oh, Kewpie brand mayo. That's, that's always nice, keeping it greasy. Um, yeah, Dua Belibis, uh chili sauce, ABC chili sauce, both from Indonesia, um, Sriracha, Shark brand Sriracha. Yeah, I need to talk about that. I'm not a big fan of Hui Fong Sriracha. I'll, I'm saying it. I'm the guy. The one in, uh, the only guy I'm thinking of everybody in the United States who likes hot sauces. I don't like Hui Fong Sriracha at all. I think it tastes bitter. I think it's wrong. I really like the Shark brand. Um, it's kind of got a little tinge of sweetness. It's nice and hot. It's got a full body to it, and it's thin. So it, it it's just like, I love it. And then there's uh, Sriracha, what is it, Paniche. Um, eh, that, one, that one's all right. That's like supposedly the original Sriracha sauce. Um, and both of those are uh, from Thailand, which is cool, you know. Sriracha is in Thailand, the city. So, not in Vietnam, not in California. <laughs> Anyways, so I hope that list helps, you know. If you need to save a buck, you know, you need some, some ideas of things to liven up your noodles. So, all right, this has been Hans, the Ramen Raider. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe. There's tons more to come. Uh, top 10 lists of instant noodles, cup noodles, bowl noodles, different countries noodles, um, oodles and noodles, noodles and poodles. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. Just look for the Ramen Raider. You'll find me. Tumblr, uh, LinkedIn. So, all right. Keep cool. Eat your noodles. Bye.